elevator because it's there's so much urine on the ground. <laughs> oh, it's so disgusting. Gross. Um, so another sort of uh, Todd and Jocelyn update. We got uh, our apartment all done up nice, which was kind of exciting. That was that, I think that's the biggest thing that's happened in a year and a half. Um, um, like this wall is yellow. Isn't it instance. great? Yeah, and we I'm going to plan it for podcasts, but it, it's you know it's nice contrast against my hair. I'm going to take people who are watching on Facebook yeah. Live on a 30 no, second no no why not no. We did not plan for that. <laughs> okay, never mind. Nope. Apparently, we'll talk about that, and <laughs> I might is, get that this later. This is a, a wife, wife. <clears throat> All right. Wife so, we know. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? Well, we um, and we have we have uh, twenty five minutes left before the podcast app goes okay. Batty. So, um, what else? Oh, well, I wanted to go back to the airline thing for one moment. Um, I, th- you know, a couple of weeks, I think a month ago now. Um, an Asian American guy on an American Airlines flight was dragged off. I think everybody and their dog must know about this. I think it was um, United. Well, United? Oh, God, sorry, American. Um, and he was dragged off the flight and assaulted, it looks like, and um, because nobody would take the the money that yeah. they'd offered to because it was oversold to, to volunteer to come off yeah so exactly one week before that happened i somehow saw a facebook share i think of a guy who is a speaker and a disability rights i think he's a lawyer who um who was removed forcibly from his flight and he's a wheelchair user and a quad and he was removed because nobody like he wasn't even told why he was removed, but he pieced together after the fact that it was probably because of his um uh because nobody had taken the money to be removed from the fl- yeah, know, yeah because it was oversold. He thought also it may have been because of his chair, yeah. but because there's been a real problem lately about um you know efficiencies on on airlines changing planes to smaller planes um suddenly because they couldn't sell enough seats or whatever and so the the flight that you booked <clears throat> your yourself on that fits your power chair is suddenly not the one that's going to pick you up and so you are just removed nobody tells you so i i kind of thought like i all sympathy for that guy on uh united who was removed from his flight it was kind of like oh well it's not like this doesn't happen a lot to people with disabilities like this is what traveling is like if you're at all different if you have any special needs whatsoever and um except you know hopefully people don't get assaulted every time yeah. um and it was a bit unfortunate because this guy, I think, was trying to make his post go viral so he could get some justice for what happened. But, um, you know, I think when you're a quad and you're flying and you have a power chair, like, you you have to plan things. Like, it it really affects you if you can't make that flight. And they removed him for what sounded like no good reason, um, which would have had tremendous effect on him. And I think it it all combines to make traveling a much more anxious experience for people with disabilities. I mean, some of my funniest stories are from travel, but I don't necessarily want to collect anymore. (laughs) And the other half are from sex. You had to bring that up. Well, because I'm trying to segue. So um, one thing that's happened since, uh, since our last recording, we'll just throw it up on the thing here. Just you forget that I'm like three feet shorter than you. Anyway, Never I don't mind. think it's going to work. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. I don't think it's going to work. Let's just keep going. Um, so I'm one thing that's that happened is uh, with your new job is you uh, and your association created this really cool sexual resource guide, mm-hmm. which uh, on Reddit I like, you know, because in the like disability forums, I don't hang out in them on Reddit that much because um, Oh, come they're on. Boring. You love... You love showing off your knowledge. Well, I uh, only only when it, I got the lingo. Well, like only when people <sighs> my ninja seal. Ah, my ninja seal. Oh my god, we have a viewer. Hi, viewer. You can comment. We'll yeah. be able to see it. Um, but one of the things that was um, was really cool is you've created this um, resource guide for sexual health. 
Because people in like the Reddit forums and so on are, you know, sometimes you'll get like I just started dating this guy and and he's a. It's it's really mostly cool. from partners, isn't it? It seems to be mostly from yeah, partners, yeah. And um and the, oh, we just lost our viewer. No, well. Sorry. <sighs> They're like sex. I don't want to talk about sex. So that so why don't you talk about that? Because I think that's kind of a cool thing. And hold this because I have to change the stupid pillow again. So I, I clearly am not able to conceal my employer at this point, but. Um, so we made a, the SCI sexual health.ca um, website and it, we made it with the sexual health rehab service at uh, Vancouver coastal health. And so we can't take credit for the awesome content there. <laughs> you should see what it looks like on the live stream. Todd's just doing an elaborate dance with the pillows. It's a thing. I'm trying to it's, it's our religion. Yes. Um, so uh, I was kind of lucky i just came into this it was you know essentially we have a pre-existing relationship with these great people that um wanted to find a way to share content about um sexuality and sexual health for people with spinal cord injuries and similar disabilities and there really aren't a lot of good resources on this there's a few videos on youtube there's some articles and in different resources but the internet being what it is, it can be really hard to find specifically what you want if what you want is sexual health information. You can find lots of porn, but finding the actual, like, wait, credible wait, 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 information. Wait, wait. You can find porn of guys in chairs? No. Oh, I'm sure you can. Really? That's a thing? You can, there's, you nah, know what Dan Savage no says, way. there's porn for everything. No, I don't buy it. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but I'm just saying, if you are searching online for sexual health related things, it's you're going to find sex related things, and yeah. that might not be what you're looking for. Um, especially if you're <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, especially if what you're looking for is like a question about how the complications of your condition are affected by sex, or how can I have a baby, and how do I what what do I need to look out for when I'm trying to make a baby, you know, that sort of thing. And not, we're super, super lucky here in Vancouver. We have access to, I think, the only uh, sexual health rehab service in Canada. Um, And it seems like one of very few resources like that in North America. What does that mean? What is that? Well, it's a, they're a a multidisciplinary clinic and they, uh, that means there's a sexual health doctor. Um, I think they have a rehab doctor which is a physiatrist um and several nurses what and does the sexual health rehab center what kind of fun equipment do they have <laughs> they have i i went saw them have a table at an event uh, that was specifically sexual health related and they had the funnest stuff on their table they had a like a positioning harness and you know, stuff that you'd see in a, a smitten kitten or like one of those sexual yeah. health resources that um, you wouldn't necessarily think that you could figure out. You know, that like the hot one that like hooks on the back of a door and we're like, how the hell would we do that? Yeah. Um, they have something like that. And it, what they do is they try and they try and collect ideas and options for the different obstacles that people have in engaging in this normal biological and emotional drive, which is sexuality. And, and I think, you know, between stigma about people with disabilities and sex and, and just generally the, you know, sex not being a huge priority in, in healthcare. Um, I think that's why there really aren't a lot of good resources on it. And so my organization, Spinal Cord Injury BC, and um, the Sexual Health Rehab Service decided to build a, a website for it, which has been doing quite well. And we have What's a, the address? I said it before, sciSexualHealth.ca. That's S-C-I-SexualHealth.ca, because we're Canadian, yo. And, um, and you found a service, Noun Project, that had like you could type in like penis and it had icons of penises. One of my Pen- one of the funnest. No, I think it's penises. penises. Um, one of the funniest things that I had to do at my job this year was, um, and I'm no graphic designer. Like I had to teach myself how to use a graphics app for this. But I had um, in one of the chapters we were 
um, explaining how if you're a man with spinal cord injury and you use an indwelling or a Foley catheter, um, which is like a tube that goes in your urethra and stays in your bladder almost all the time. Um, it explains like how if you want to have sex, what what do you do with that? And it says you could cap it off or you could remove it. Um, but if say if you're a quad, that might be really difficult to do. You might not have someone around to put it back in for you. Um, and so the other suggestion is you put a con, you you um, fold it back against your leg because it's like a soft tube, and you tape it to your leg with a lot of like extra um, tubing, and then you um, put a condom on. And of course, we couldn't find that anywhere online. Mm, like, where yeah. are you going to find that? I looked, and I'm a little scarred by what I found. Um, and so I had to take from Noun Project, which is this great website that offers free um, symbols um, created by designers all over the world, as long as you uh, credit, credit them. them or pay. And because we're a nonprofit, we credited them. Um, and the so I used one of those symbols of a penis um and they had like 40 to choose from which is kind of amazing and I had to draw like design a um a condom and a fully tube and stuff like I I was very proud of what I did it might not have be the prettiest thing but it's accurate here's something sexual you're not proud of <laughs> that's quite the Jesus, Todd. I'm trying to work on the on the segues. Um, so, Something you're not proud of. Go so uh, we were at an event, uh, and it had uh, it had a number of booths that were kind of normal, and it was just kind of a general trade show kind of thing. And they oh the slow head turn. She's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And and um, one of them had uh, had like kind of sexy outfits, kind of like not I'm corsets, old. but <laughs> I you know where I'm going with this. So. So uh, she's in, <laughs> Jocelyn's in the booth over, yeah. and I'm like talking. It was like some vacation thing next door or something, and all of a sudden I hear this crash from the booth next door where Jocelyn is. I crashed into a wall of corsets. Okay, this is what Todd's talking about. And the reason why is that you were testing out what's the name of the thing? It's called a smart drive. And um, so I I, I messed up my shoulder. I messed up my shoulder last summer, and. Um, we had already booked a trip to Vegas, and um, we were at a mall or something, and it had booths, and um, there was someone who made these corsets or jewelry or something, and the smart drive is a super cool device, and it hooks on the back of your chair. Um, you have a little mount, and then it's it's basically a wheel, a small wheel, and a power unit. And a handle. And it's you cool. kind of click it on the back of your chair when you need it. And then you wear a little bracelet. And the bracelet has a big button. And it's designed to read your gestures of when you want to go fast or slow or, you know, whatever. There's only two speeds. Um, and I think they call this the, the easier speed is training mode. Um, but if you're me and you talk with your hands... You might accidentally throw it into fast mode when you're sitting still. And so I was sitting still in the booth and um, I triggered it and I crashed into a, the wall of the booth was full of these body molds, like mannequin body molds. Don't just leave her. And, um, and that was kind of funny because some of them kind of fell down on me. Do we need the heavy breathing in the podcast? The, the panting you're hearing. If you were watching on our uh, Facebook video of us off. recording this, uh, which is facebook.com slash gimpacks, you will see at the 29-minute mark. Um, that's Gertie. That's our, that's our schnauzer. Yeah. Oh, do I get a kiss? No, anyway. No. So that was pretty funny. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? And we'll we're trying had, to do these more frequently. I had an um one last one that I the last article that made me go, we should do this podcast again. So um not to pick too hard on um the US, but so there's uh Roosevelt Island and it's a cool island that's mostly sort of a park and a museum off the coast of Manhattan, like in the I don't know, 
in the water. The East River, maybe? I don't know. Around Manhattan. Um, and you can take a really cool tram to get there. Last time I was in New York, we were our hotel was right beside the tram. And so we took the tram to Roosevelt Island. So on the, the southern end of Roosevelt Island, 